Hi Matthias. Hi. Uh, so you're here at Build, yeah. and uh, we are doing a quick interview to talk about a product that you've been working on for how long? Uh, I've been working on this in 2014. Uh -huh. uh, I was one of the, so the product is Cake. Uh, it's an open source uh, thing broker section tool, uh, and it was founded by a, a guy called Patrick Svensson in May, and I started sending pull requests and things in June, and I joined the team. Uh, as the first team member in September that year, so it's been uh, almost three years now. So it's well, cool. Yeah. How many people are using Cake? Do you know? Uh, I don't know exactly how, how many people, but we we just uh, passed half a million downloads on NuGet on the, the Cake Runner. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's hard to know exactly because we we're on Homebrew, we're on Chocolatey. Uh, some people downloaded the source and compile and things like that. So, but it's. It feels like it start to get momentum now. Yeah. So, why would you choose to use Cake rather than MS Build? What are the, the main advantages? Well, we don't replace MS Build. We're an orchestrating tool, so we basically but use. So the, is MS Build, right? Yeah, but the, the difference is like MS Build is XML, mm -hmm. and Cake is well based on C sharp. So it's just right. like if you use Gulp for JavaScript or. Uh, Use uh, fake for F sharp, or yeah. the, but the cake uses a C sharp PSL, so you can uh, reuse your C sharp skills to uh, find the build orchestration. So is it really about reusing skills, or is it also about uh, being able to do stuff more flexibly? Or well, one big advantage is that it's a source file or a script file that is alongside your repository, mm. so you will re revision your uh, file. A uh, version of file along with your right. things, uh, with your source code, and also it means that you can run it both locally for any build system available. So you can debug the script locally and test it that it oh, works. Oh yeah, I like that. Being uh, able to debug that that's pretty. So sweet. yeah, many build systems don't allow that for you to like. And we have full Visual Studio debugger and Visual Studio Code debugger support, mm. so you can single step in your uh, basically in your build scripts. So. Uh, if I have a if I have, if I have a project that's currently using uh, MS Build, uh, how do you recommend that I that I transition? Is, is there a way to do this in a smooth way where I do it piece by piece? Or yeah, basically, Cake. Well, you could just use, but Cake has several aliases, which is the build like the features that we like the tools we wrap or the APIs we wrap. We call them aliases, and there's an alias for MS Build. So if you have an MS Build file, we can just build that. But we can also add features like, oh, then I want to add packaging or deployment, or we want a clean process before, uh, basically with the task. So you can you can like start with one thing and then add things you don't have. Uh, so it's fair to say that there are basically two ways of doing that. One that is from the outside in, where you start replacing what's around the build script, and another way that would be inside out, where you start with adding some tasks, some new tasks. Yeah, but I mean, but that are the things cake or well, many basically. Is, is don't that even possible? Tasks. Can you go both ways? Can you uh, integrate some cake uh, steps into your existing MSB old? Uh, that's not main idea. Usually, you start the cake script and that right. Uh, that, 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 that's not the right thing. Cake about will about handle your, like okay. your clean process, your restore, and your build and test. Mm. And, but mm. it usually cake just utilizes existing tools like XUnit or uh, NUnit or okay. MS Build, uh, NuGet or the .NET CLI if you're using .NET Core. Mm. So basically we wrap those tools in a nice C-sharp syntax where you have type C-sharp classes and methods to use. Mm. What's your favorite feature in Cake? Well, portability, like it's both cross-platform but it's also cross-environment. So if, if you see Cake itself, we build it on 12 build systems, mm. the same script. So basically, this, if we push code, commit to GitHub, we will build it on 12 different build servers with the same script. And I that's see. very hard to do the portability with other systems. Uh, right. So that's, I think, the killer feature that this works both on .NET Core, on Mono, and the full framework. Mm. So you can uh, have portability both like Windows, Mac, and the Linux, but also cross framework and cross environment, and I think mm. that's the build standard. That you can have the same script run on the developer's machine, on MyGet, Appware, or uh, Bitrise, or Travis, or TeamCity, or whatever, mm. and have the same process. And basically, you just have 
one builds that belongs and have a unified process and have the environment control what happens in the script. So you can have like, if I build on AppWare and that is the production environment, you can have environment variables that control that then I push to my get or new get depending on branch or things like that. So it's very flexible and it's a strength that you can test it locally too or run it in a container if you use .NET Core or things like that. So it's, I think that's the big selling point that it will run everywhere. Also that the definition is along your side, your C Sharp code or your .NET project. So your build definition is version controlled along with your rest of your code. And like any developer can just check out, run the cake script and it will do all the restore. And like you have a ready-made recipe for how to get running with dependencies and all that. I think that's a big selling point. Do you use it in your day job? Yeah. So that's given to face like I we do I use it in day job. For just not only building but also deployment. So you can use it in, if you use like Kudo, the Azure deployment environment, you can run cake scripts there. Or if you have some other kind of deployments it's fully possible to uh, use that. So you can some people use like the homebrew on Mac or the chocolate to have it uh, available globally on a computer or so. Then you can basically run any cake script just to also just to try out C sharp because basically anything that works in C sharp will work in cake. And then we add a super set of uh, like we add things to the DSL like we have like the task runner and we have a few uh, the aliases which is basically we wrap tools that aren't available. So what what does a typical cake script look like? Is it does it look more like C sharp or is it does well, it have its own DSL? Well, it thing? has its own DSL. So the, the primitive is task basically. That task is something you do. Mm -hmm. So the typical will be one task for each item you're going to do in the workflow. So usually you start with, like, with a clean task to clean all the uh, uh, out. Then you have a restore task to fetch any artifacts you need, like new get packages or things like that. And then you have a build task to build your project or things like that. And after that, you have usually kind of a test task to test your dependencies. And, if, and then you have uh, something like a package task to get, build your uh, new get packages or things like that. And if you're like on the master branch and in CI, you usually have a publish task where you either go to new get or if it's a website, you wait to web deploy to. Ash website. Mm -hmm. So that's usually like the main workflow. And that's basically just the C sharp method that gives you a task, task, task. And you can, the big difference, you can also define dependencies between these tasks. So if you run the latest task, it's like, well, before I can do a restore, I want to do the clean. Before I do the build, I want to do the restore. Yeah. And then you can set dependencies on each of those tasks. So it will reverse that like graph mm. and execute it in order so you know like if the test fails you won't create a NuGet package and if the package fails you won't push a package to NuGet right. it will report that log uh, and log that yeah one of the things I like about the, the idea of cake or fake or those mm. uh, those systems is that um, in comparison something like MSV can be a little intimidating yeah. because uh, there is a fair amount of black magic yeah. involved, even even if it was greatly simplified recently. Uh, I really like that you can use something you know, which is the yeah. language you use to build your actual product. So yeah, I mean, th there's many like task runners. Yeah. Uh, so, the, but I think it's what I found with people that really like is that there's something that the team can maintain. But sometimes when the build script just works. You possible that you don't touch it for weeks or months mm. but if it's in a language you know then uh, you can like fix it yeah uh, what about integration of uh, JavaScript tools uh, there are like if you use like npm and things like that there are add-ins that provide that functionality so you yeah. can do like the npm installs or uh, things like that package and right. so that's fully possible to execute. But yeah, so it's just a question of using the right library. And yeah. So the, there's, uh, that's quite like a good thing about Cake. There's over 150 add-ins mm. to Cake available on NuGet. And that's one of the parts we add to the DSL. We have an add-in directive. And that add-in directive will let you to pull down uh, NuGet assemblies. How, how do you find those packages? Uh, you just I, go to NuGet and yeah. do, uh, so you basically do a search the, on Cake? And yeah. Or basically the add-in directive can download any NuGet assembly and you can reference this. The 
difference with the like a native add-in is that we will automatically import namespaces and things that are needed, so it will be globally available. But you could use any uh, .NET assembly that fits the framework that you are targeting, and you, that way you just have to add like the using statement uh, for those namespaces. Too. But the big thing to add is that we make them globally available, so you can just like the easy part. Uh, mm. So it's uh, so the, and there's a lot of add-ins for like. Uh, hockey app, uh, Samarin, uh, mm. and all all the things uh, like uh, Kudu I mentioned. Uh, they they add in for that. There's add-ins for communicating with Slack, Microsoft Teams. Uh, so and there's over 300 or like 385 or something like tools wrapped built in in case. So you get a lot of things built in for like XUnit, the .NET Core CLI, and things that do, those are built in. And MS Build, X Build, uh, there's a lot of built in to get for free. Very nice. And it's all open source? Yeah, it's all open source. And it's also the product also a member of the .NET Foundation. Mm -hmm. So you, you, that's which ensures the, like, the longevity of the project. Because there's a good stewardship behind it. And with five people now that's back in the project. So it's uh, do you need, um, are there any, we, we let this model right pass. <laughs> uh, are, are there any uh, contributions that you would like to see more than others? Do you have up for grabs? Uh, yeah, we do have up for grabs, and uh, especially like there also always documentation is mm -hmm. like always the, the perfect thing to start yeah. with if you want to contribute uh, because that's a safe thing to contribute. You won't break yep. anything, but you will make the like the story better. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do generate all the documentation from source code and XML documentation, so that's up on kbuild.net. So you can almost like, as soon as we release a new version, the documentation will be updated automatically. And we do that with uh, Cake and a tool called IAM, which is a static site generator. Yeah. So, so that's a really good way to start. Um, but also, add-ins is a good way to start. Because then you can start safe, out of bound with Cake. And if the feature is good, then we can lift it into common core if it is, if it is needed. Oh, interesting. Is that something that you, that you do uh, commonly to, yeah. to take an add-in and make it part of the official well, package? Well, it, it depends on if, if it's like if a new version of MS Build comes, which yeah. happened. Yeah. Then we can start the new version thing oh, yeah. in the, in the add-in and then we can lift it in that. Mm. But also if it's like a real narrow thing, then we'll probably leave it in the add-in yeah. because it won't make sense to have it. Yeah. And that's also like the we have uh, started an organization on GitHub called K Country, where mm -hmm. it's over 50 projects now that we help and supply build resources to, and also like help people to that are doing add-ins. So, or, and that's good to know that there's two ways to extend Cake. You can do it either to add-ins or modules. And the thing with modules is that then you can replace core functionality within Cake with the .NET assembly, like things like the file system implementation. If you're on Windows and don't want need mm -hmm. the long, long file name supports, there's an add-in for that. Or if you want to be able to download add-ins not via NuGet but using Packet mm -hmm. or something like that, that is a module that lets you do that. Uh, there's also modules in the works for NPM, in, like in fetching dependencies of mm -hmm. modules for NPM. Like that. Very nice. How do you like the conference so far? What did you think of the keynote? It's been uh, it's been a great conference so far, uh, and I think. It's fair to say that the cloud's still the bet, uh -huh. and it's AI is what's big focus now. And yeah. Just, just not like super, not, but also like the whole conversation parts with bots and uh, like the serverless function that like, do like little things that really can make a difference in the application to yeah. make it stand out. So I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, one thing that really stood out for me this morning was the. Um, uh, the, that lady who had yeah, the Emma project. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, I mean, and like the year before, it was the the blind guy with the yeah. like things like that. Is like, it's hard to not be touched when you're yeah, watching exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it was like it's someone rare had, that, I'm, yeah. that I'm emotionally touched yeah. by a keynote. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's <laughs> like the, a famous like one of the tweets that were like, "Is someone cutting onions now here?" Because yeah. It was like, yeah. It's like when you see technology that can. Like improve life quality. Yes. that's uh, amazing. Yes, it, it. I think it did a good job of showing that software is absolutely everywhere in, yeah. in modern and also, life. Yeah, and also like with the translation parts, like where the people are, uh, or like 
enabling conversations yeah. between languages yeah. and also with the bots would have enabled like people that can't hear mm -hmm. would have been able to transcribe in real time yeah. for people that are like hearing impaired that's yeah changing lives yeah. and even saving lives in some yeah. cases and so also it's like, amazing probably to, like improving communication between yeah. people and i yeah. think that's super cool yeah absolutely well thanks a lot uh it's been a pleasure of talking to you yeah. and talk to uh, you. maybe we can have you back on the show another time to maybe make a demo yeah that of course cool. we can do some demos all right mm -hmm. excellent thank you thank you